for the best I can, I guess. So. so are you planning on just cutting this and chopping it or what? Yeah, we're actually going to probably start green chopping in some of this stuff really soon and see if we get a milk response. Um, see if we can see a difference between the plots. Um, and if we don't, you know, if we don't get it green chopped, we'll just cut it with the, the Kemper head and probably put it in for heifers or so. Like if we don't see a milk response for the cows, then we'll just make it for heifer feed these, these sections here. probably had 8 to 12 inch rye when we put uh, 16 to 18,000 gallons. But the rye, there was a few patches where it got killed by some manure around the turns and stuff, but it was really thick and hard. And pretty good establishment. Yeah. Yeah. How many pounds per acre do you plant in the fall then? On rye? Yeah. Rye, we have done like 55. Uh, we were told this year that to actually achieve weed suppression with rye, you need to do over 100. Um, we've always done like 55 of rye, so it seems like a lot when it's a really well grown, but I'd, I'd be willing to bet if we'd have planted more, yeah, I don't know if that would have helped with the weeds, but then you got to get it down. Because if it's standing, it's going to block the sun from the corner. So, I... <laughs> well, that early, too, it, it tillers out, you know, and everything, so you get a lot more. Yeah. You get a lot more right than you plant it. Yeah, one thing, we, we have one field of soybeans into the rye, which a lot of the, you know, really progressive conservation minded farmers in the plains or wherever they don't plant any soybeans without it going into rye those beans look really good um, we should have rolled that rye too but um, those beans are taller than a lot of people's beans right now and look like they're going to be really good so um, for whatever that's worth <laughs> to tear apart our planter and set it all up until we tried it. So I told Mark we had to do an experiment. Well, we screwed up the experiment. So it's a little hard to know if we should still, it might not happen this winter yet with our planter, but um, we have a, a couple other on the paper. We tried across the, the creek down there, we tried 60 inch rows with just soybeans in between the corn and what did we do oh we just did a straight corn which we don't even do any of that anymore except that little 60 inch or 60 foot swat just to see a yield check the so, standard is corn soybean yeah 
Yeah, and you can see that, like the outside rounds, the first three rounds are just corn and soybeans. The soybeans are impressively tall this year. They're, they're up here. They're half as tall as the corn right now. Yeah, it's 30 inch rows. Yeah, it's 30 inch rows. Um, I'm expecting this year to be really big in That's done pretty well for us as feed. The only question I have is, is if, how much and if, if or how much yield we lose. Um, I think the soybeans take a little bit of it. stuff we want in the field in one pack. <laughs> so are you able to save on uh, protein by feeding that mixture? Uh, that, it's not significant. It's maybe one or two points higher than protein. Um, digestibility is usually a little bit higher. Um, the soybeans are not, there's no, there's, there's not usually beans. It's a real late bean. Uh, we want them to be fully green. So, but they're. I wanted to get these. Uh, the company wouldn't cooperate. There's a company that sells soybeans for deer plots that are supposed to get like 12 feet tall, and they're just forage. But they wanted to charge, sell them at deer plot price, and <laughs> it didn't matter if I wanted, a, you know, two pallets or whatever. Uh, so I wasn't going to give in. <laughs>